Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next session of From Nothing, Kalen's Story. Now, this session is going to be a little bit different from how they have been in the past. This is the timeline session. After Kalen has finished his fall festival, we will be covering a year of time. So, here we go. The fall festival is over. You might not have made it all the way to the end, but you did accomplish a lot. As well as come out of it with new scars, stories, and a good idea of what live combat might be like. First and foremost, you are now busier than you've ever been before. But unlike before the Fall Festival, your missions and free agencies have grown tedious. You spend days at a time on stakeout in nearby towns, waiting to see if a person appears, which they often don't. You've escorted so many caravans to Augur City from the Faro Markets that you could probably ride that stretch of road with your eyes closed. Where at one point you likely got attached to your horse, that horse was then rented to someone else, and then your next horse got sick. And since then, so many horses have gone by that you're not sure when they've stopped really meaning something to you, beyond just a means of travel. Oh no, Buttercup. Mm -hmm. You've spent... <laughs> Days in the Ferrum Market, just standing around. Little more than a security guard for a Tridonian merchant or a Terraconan trader offering rare wares. And it can be exhausting. All the while, the lessons with Amila Dorn and Triss have grown fewer and shorter. At first, it was one of the other class four times a week and duties once. And now you find yourself performing menial mercenary work four days a week and only having a day or so to work on your studies. Knowing this, and knowing how your time is spent for the Academy, how does this year go for Kalen? So, well... Uh-huh. Go ahead. Sorry, uh, you go ahead. There's a few things that you got to think about over this year. You're not going to have a whole <laughs> lot of time to split over other things but perhaps if there are skills you want to train perhaps if there are other students you want to try and get onto your team or if there is money you wish to earn these are the things that we're going to cover today so how do you start okay uh well in the week after the fall festival um after losing it, facing defeat and disappointment for his performance, um, he tries to overturn a new leaf in the form of a tattoo, um, which looks, um, it's probably not uh, the greatest tattoo artist, um, but he's going to try his best to find a decent hand at making a tattoo uh, of the scar on his neck from that arrow during the fall festival. Um, a Basically, it's going to look like um, a coiled snake on his shoulder and shoulder blade kind of reaching up to the spot on his neck where the scar is and biting that scar. Okay. Um, yeah. Sure. Um, there is no professional tattooist in Ferrum, but that does not mean that you can't find one because Ferrum is a port town and there are constantly sailors and traders coming in and out and visiting the markets. So, please roll me a D100. Uh, I think the first person he'd ask, who he knows has a steady hand and has seen his neat work with just the body, he would ask Zurich first and foremost. Uh, that would be the first person he he would okay. approach. So you, if you're not searching for a tattoo artist, and instead you'd ask Zurich. Um, well, Zurich would not be opposed. Um, so the conversation would go something like, you'd step into the physicers, and Zurich would say, Well, I'm not an artist. Um, 
Do you happen to have an idea for such imagery that you wanted upon your person? I, I, uh, I do. Um, I was thinking of a, a coiled snake on my shoulder blade coming up and biting this scar. Hmm. Uh, well, I can... Why don't I take a hand and maybe, uh, attempting a practice sketch first and see if you'll approve. I right, we can do that. Um, let me roll for Zurich. Uh, he's a plus eight to this. Okay. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's better than I, I'll give him, be. I'll give him a, a guidance. Okay. Or no, I can't. I could never mind. That's uh, that's only for me. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> uh, he rolls a <laughs> on his practice piece. He rolls a twenty-eight. He rolled a natural twenty. Nice. So the snake, uh, it's like a coiled brown and black, uh, very venomous looking snake it, it, or it actually looks like a cobra um, and you see that he's kind of depicted where it will bite the scar and he shows it to you and he says is this is this the sort of thing you're um, hoping for oh that's perfect well, um, I'm happy to give it a shot uh, and if it doesn't work out we can always um try to remove it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've not ever done that before, but uh, it's the first time for everything. You know, it might hurt a little. Um, so, you are hiring an amateur artist. Yes. Uh, are you going to ask Zurich to try and imbue anything in this tattoo? <laughs> uh, I thought that wasn't, imp uh, that wasn't possible. Well, um, Zurich is an artificer, so it's possible, uh, but it does make the base cost 55 gold plus whatever the bonus you're hoping for is. Okay, I got the money for that. Um, I would need the document um, of uh, what I yeah, can yeah, yeah. get. Let me make that to you. Hold on. Uh... It might be easier to ask what sort of budget does Kalen have and is willing to spend on this tattoo. I think he's willing to spend upward, uh, probably a hundred gold. Total. Total. Uh, then I believe the best you can get is. Uh, well, actually, I don't think you can afford a basic magical tattoo. You can afford one with magical ink, but that doesn't actually give you a bonus. Yeah, it looks like the cheapest tattoo that you could get is a skill. Hold on a minute. You could gain, you could get a tattoo that grants you proficiency in a declared skill, such as stealth, persuasion, athletics, animal handling. Uh, but each of those is a 100 gold tattoo plus that base cost, so it'll be 155 gold. Okay. Uh. Oh, active. Okay, gotcha. Or the lesser mark of the warrior, or the lesser mark of the bastion. Um, or the lesser mark of the scholar. Those are seventy-five gold plus the base cost, so one hundred and thirty gold for any of those. Okay, I think he'd be willing to spend one hundred and thirty gold. Okay, um, so I would pick, I would say go ahead and look at those. Um, the tattoo for the mark of the warrior, the lesser one, uh, increases your roll. You have to choose between hit or damage, depending on what you choose. It increases your melee attacks bonus by one. Um, mm. Mark of the Bastion, the lesser one increases your hit points by level by one. Okay, so it's like um, kind of like um, Dwarven. Yeah, a little bit. Fortitude. Yeah. Just 
just one per level. Um, and then the Mark of the Scholar, the lesser one, gives you a plus one to intelligence or wisdom skill checks. So just okay. the skill checks, not saving throws or anything like that. Okay. Uh... Or, okay. if you don't want mm -hmm. to, if you don't want to spend the money on a magical tattoo, which will limit the number of tattoos you can have in total, you can instead just get a basic tattoo, which is five gold. <laughs> yeah, I. Mm. Or fifteen. Okay, gold, sorry. I think. Trying to look at his skills right now. Sure. I think he's going to go for the Bastion. Mark of the Bastion, lesser tattoo in the shape of a coiled snake on your neck. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in order to imbue this magical tattoo, um, it's simple enough, but it does take some time. Um, mm -hmm. Zurich has already proven to be proficient enough to do this, as he rolled a natural 20. So, um, I will roll. He's going to need to make a spell casting check. Uh, what's your constitution score, sir? Uh, 16. 16. Okay, that makes the DC lower. Uh... Hold on. Okay. Apparently, Zurich is was looking for a situation where he could put a tattoo on someone. Um, yes. He rolled a natural eighteen. So hell yeah! All right. Uh, he does require one hundred and thirty gold for the time and the materials. Oh, okay, that's uh, that's perfectly fine. I have that. You said one hundred and thirty. Yes. Okay. I believe. Let me double check this. Uh, yes. Amateur artist is 5 gold. Magical link is 50 gold, so that's 55. 75 gold for the specific tattoo, so that's 55 plus 75, 130. Perfect. All right. As he inscribes the tattoo on your clavicle, shoulder, and neck... Go ahead on your character sheet. We are going to add one hit point per level. So oh, four. Mm -hmm. Your total hit points increase to forty-four. Um. All right, come on, configure hit points. It's not letting me. Is it not letting I got you. You can actually right. add a per level bonus in Foundry, which is excellent. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, and finally, after two weeks of time to inscribe this lesser tattoo. Uh, wow. Yeah, it's significant. Um, mostly what the time is spent, he is imbuing the ink with magic. And then implanting it into your skin. And finally, after two weeks, he tilts you up off the cot, and he holds up a mirror, and he says, Well, what do you think about this? It's, uh, it's perfect. That's <laughs> exactly what I want. And he looks over at uh, Annika, and he says, And you said I've never had any artistry in my work. And Annika says, I said that you shouldn't be working on artists. Sorry. Well, there you are. <laughs> well, thank you. You are welcome. It's, um, that was a I don't know what to say. I've never uh, really done that before. <laughs> well, if anything, um, I think I'll be around more often uh, with my friend Sean. Hmm. I believe uh, he was with you in the Fall Festival, yes? Aye. He was the curious one. 
He was. Um, he's an artificer himself. <laughs> then perhaps we'll have things to talk about. I'm hoping so. Then I look forward to seeing you then. Good deal. Oh, by the way, uh, make sure that you apply this ointment or it will uh, become infected. So. I will do so. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll see you later then. I will be here as always. Except for when I'm not. <laughs> and uh, he leaves. Okay, so <laughs> Kaylin has purchased a tattoo. Yes. Um, also, in tandem with getting this tattoo, um, he is knowing that the Fall Festival was televised, basically, uh, whatever that means in this world, to the rest of the world. Um, he's sure that it's very possible that his friends and his family have also seen him perform. Mm -hmm. um, so, basically, the next day after the fall festival, he will be writing two letters. One to his parents, or rather, grandparents, and both, well, a single letter between both Alex and Shay. Okay. Um, it's basically, it's going to be a lot of information about where he's been, what he's been doing, um, that he's really found a calling and um, that he misses both his grandparents and his friends dearly. Okay. <laughs> and this letter is just to like is it to a specific person or is it just to your family uh well one these is two separate letters actually right. probably th i'm gonna say i'm gonna make it three okay. so uh one to his parent to his grandparents uh and mo all of them have the same context uh he's just gonna oh you're saying the same letter to three different people basically yeah um, with some personalized uh, wordage and well his grandparents know where he is but so he's just gonna he's just gonna basically tell his grandparents everything that he's done up until that point um, and how much he's learning and how much he's grown um, the uh, other two letters to his best friends uh, to Shay, um, he's basically going to tell her that um, he had to leave quickly and that he's here at the Marigard Academy. Uh, and he, and like, just go over everything that he's learned and um, that if she wants to, he can pay for her way to come visit. And he says the same for Alex. Okay. All right, then. As you send those three letters out. Roll me just a general charisma roll. Ooh. <laughs> it's not a hard DC. Uh... <laughs> I'll definitely add a D4 f for, for this. Okay. Um... That, did that go through? Uh, yes. Ay, yeah, yeah. You rolled a nine. I rolled a nine. So you did. Okay. Uh, you get your thoughts down on the paper and you send them off. Uh huh. Uh, okay. From your grandparents, you receive a letter saying that they are very pleased to hear that you found a calling. Uh, they're excited that. You are basically growing. They're excited that, to hear that you have a future ahead of you. Um, 
from your best friends, from Shay and Alex. Uh, Shay is... Seems, from the letter, angry that you left in a hurry. Um, she seems bitter that you were not open with her before. Uh, basically, she's in the letter, she's like, why did I see you in the fall festival before I learned from you that you were there? Uh, that's what you get from Shay. And from Alex, uh, you get... He'd love to come see you. <laughs> okay. He would love to come to Ferrum and hang out. Um, basically. All right. Uh, after I think after receiving the letter from Shay, um, uh, he would write a shorter, a definitely shorter letter to her again, just kind of continuing the correspondence and just saying that he can't put the reason why he left so quickly in a letter. But talk to Alex and please come to Verum so I can talk to both of you. Okay. Roll me another charisma roll. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. You have a plus two in this. You'll be fine. Uh-huh. All right. It's a little better. Yeah, 15. <laughs> Uh, in her correspondence to you, uh, you hear, not you hear, sorry, you read, she says, I spoke to Alex when you're a full Marigard mercenary, why don't you come see me? Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, no. All right. Okay. Do you say anything back? Um, I send a letter back um, saying I'll be there. <laughs> in a little a little more words than that um he's gonna keep up with like telling her about like all that he's done okay like just general like how things have have been going and trying to keep that that openness with them so um in her correspondence to you you kind of get the the sense that she's challenging you like she believes okay. that you're at the Mer Marigard Mercenary. She's just... I mean, she's seen me, yeah. Yeah. She's basically saying, prove it. Like, make it. Okay. Make it worth it, I, is what she's saying. I think that really spurs him to go into the next stage of training, or extra training, that uh, I kind of have planned for Caitlin. <laughs> which is trying to find an instructor or someone at the Mary Guard that can teach him two weapon fighting, um, which he's going to ask. Um, oh gosh, why am I blinking on it? Uh, it's been so long. Um, <laughs> One of the instructors, the no Perf? student. Oh no, uh, <sighs> student. Tier? Tier. The other ranger student, aside from Killer? Yes. Yep. Okay. He's going to... Because uh, I believe he's a two-weapon fighter now, right? Uh, Tier does use two-weapon fighting, yes. Okay. Yes. Then he's going to ask Tier if, uh, if it's possible. And if... Uh, Maybe in a trade of services, um, like Kalen 
simultaneously teaches Tier um, how to shoot a bow better. Um, like he's, uh, Kalen has the archery fighter or the archery um, feature of the of the uh, fighting styles. You, the fighting styles. Fighting styles yeah. Archery. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, Tier would be amenable to if you're asking him to teach you. He's mm -hmm. he's willing to. Um, Perfect. <laughs> let's see here. Hold on a minute. Let me read this real quick. I imagine it's kind of like we kind of come together and we he teaches me something to work on and then I tell him something to work on and we just kind of together in the same space we work on those respective things together. Okay, so mechanically, you are trying to gain the two up and fighting feet. Um, or the deal wielder feet? I'm trying to understand. Hold on. If it's. If the. I would love the feet, but if I only have time for the fighting style, two weapon fighting, then I will go for that. Okay, so. You can't really gain. A fighting style. That's not really how mechanically it works. Um, he can teach you to fight with a weapon in your offhand and add your modifier to it. Um, mechanically, in order to do this, you're basically going to be getting the feet, is what you're training. And okay. for him. You teaching him archery is going to gain him the sharpshooter feat. Oh, which is yeah, that's kind of how it has to work because you can't really add another fighting style. Sure, yeah. I believe. One moment, please. Let me make sure I'm not talking out my <laughs> ass here, especially considering. Uh, hold on. Oh. Sorry. I'm wrong. You can both train to teach each other the fighting initiate feat, where you can choose that fighting style to add. Which feat Okay, that, that's awesome. That would be great, yes. Okay. Uh, this is going to require some rolls uh, to see how long it takes you. Okay. So, Tyr is going to teach you two of and fighting. Uh, in order to do this, I need you to go ahead and roll me an athletics check. Why not acrobatics? I'm just kidding. Um, athletics. This is fine. Okay, 15. 15. You're off to a good start. Now I need you to roll me a straight intelligence check. Okay, 14. Okay, looking good so far. Lastly, I need a con save. All right. All right, 14 again. Okay, those were all successes. Over the next two months working with Tier, uh, he teaches you the techniques of, of pulling out an offhand weapon and using it effectively in combat. Uh not just landing attacks with it, but how to feint with it and properly manage keeping a weapon that could hurt you in your offhand away from hurting you. So, over two months, you gain the fighting initiate feat with the fighting style to weapon fighting. Okay. So go ahead and add that to your character sheet. Drag that into there. So, I want to be clear, for these first two months, that's what you're doing in your free time. Aside from, like, sleeping and maybe a little bit of recreation, you don't really have time, aside from training with Tierra, to do other stuff. Okay. 
Oh, I'm gonna have to. Okay, so I, I'm gonna have to do this on D and D Beyond. It doesn't allow me to select anything in Foundry. I thought I could do it in Foundry. I guess not. Uh, I would have to edit it as your DM. Uh, okay, so two months training. That sounds awesome. Okay. Uh, I should also mention uh, socially, like during meals and or free agencies, if he has the option to pick someone to come with him, um, he would definitely build the relationships with Duracon. Uh, Matthew and Sean, like further build those relationships. Okay. Um, and try to get close to each one of them in turn. Okay. Um, you mean try and learn more about where they're from, or are you yeah. just trying to get build a stronger relationship with them? Uh, build a stronger relationship with them. Okay. The sort of things where you, you get into, like, the NPC's backstories, those are going to have to happen on camera. So, yeah, uh, we'll, we can handle those during normal sessions. Uh, That's good. Okay. So... It's it's totally fine if you want to spend time with them, hang out, become closer. Uh, you don't have to roll anything for that. You can just say that's what you're doing, and that's totally fine. Um, cool. Let's see. Okay. Uh, we kind of have the first bracket of the year before your graduation done. And at that moment, the next day, the next time you head into class, um, you are sent to the ranger's classroom where Triss kind of pulls you to the side um, and she says, Hey, have we talked about what your graduation test is going to be? No, not at all. All right. Uh, well, now's the time. You proved yourself uh, effective in combat in the fall festival and you've been working on yourself ever since, which I approve and appreciate. Uh, when it comes time, your graduation test, and she tells you the date, which is one year after you started. Mm -hmm. uh, I talked with Amila about this. Uh, we don't really have Horizon Walkers too often, um, but she said based on your skills and the way we should handle this is she is going to, uh, you, like, Triss actually looks a little bit nervous as she says this. She says, you have to return from another plane by yourself. Oh. All right. Um. I get to choose what plane? No. No. <laughs> Uh, Miss Dorn is going to um, project with you into another plane and watch as you find your way out. Oh, all right. That's um, that's very challenging. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Well, I'm. I'm up for the challenge. That's good to hear. Uh, she smiles a little bit. Uh, and she says, I do trust Miss Dorn. She wouldn't do anything that would get you in danger. So just maybe talk to her. See if you can get an inkling as to where it is you're going to be going. Uh, 
I'll do that. Yeah. Um, should I go now? Oh, just when you have... I mean, it's not for... Seven months? Fair enough. Uh, I'll bring it up next time I'm in, I'm in her class. She thumps you on the shoulder and she says, All right, now back to work. All right. So, and he gets back to work. Yeah. So, for your graduation test, which we'll handle in the next session, um, Kaelin is going to be navigating out of a extra planar location back to the prime material. Fun. All right. <laughs> Hopefully, it's to a plane that he's already been. Probably not, but. <laughs> uh, we will find out, that's for sure. Um, I don't necessarily know either. Okay. <laughs> well. Uh, but now you know, and now Kalen knows what he has to prepare for. Fair enough. Um, I think that, with knowing that, he is going to, um, When he first learned about, or started learning about the other planes, and um, kind of picking up on the different peoples of the other planes, um, he came across another race of people that, like him, could travel the planes easily um, or with an innate ability that he has discovered and so he is going to attempt to find someone to teach him Gith at okay. the Mary Garden okay uh, sure uh, who would that be do you ask around uh, I first and foremost, he would ask Persh since uh, he has his hands on everything. Sure, uh, <laughs> Persh kind of raises an eyebrow at you when you ask. Um, why is it that you want to? I suppose it doesn't really matter, does it? Um, you should speak to Tabernacle about that. All right. Um. I'll go do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I was hoping my team's down to four, including me. All right. And I was hoping you might have a suggestion for a student here uh, that I could talk to about joining my who team. Um, who are you hoping to replace? Lilith. Hmm. So, someone maybe strong. Uh, someone who could get up in someone's face and fight. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, well. And he, like, pulls out uh, a large tome ledger. He's, he's shifting through it. And he says, There's a few options. Um, remind me, one moment please, as I'm searching, is there an individual that you, the player, are hoping that would turn up? Uh, Tame. Tame, the barbarian? Yes, the barbarian student, yes. Okay, um, as I'm looking at your team, Duracon, Matthew, and Sean. Okay, uh, sure, that works. So, Persh pulls a page out. You get along well with, uh, barbarian types? I, Hiram and I have been, uh, on a few hunts. Sure, he's on Nori's team, but another option... Uh, ooh, jeez. 
easy going enough. Uh, stop <laughs> by Makito's classroom and see if you can get a hold of Tame. You'll know her when you see her. Enormous half orc woman. All right. Not sounds pretty hard to miss. Uh, aye, oh, she would be. Very well. Um, I'll stop on by after Tabernacle. So, thank you, Persh. You're welcome. And he goes to Tabernacle to ask about her name, Geth. Okay, so how do you bring this up? Like, you go into Tabernacle's classroom. Um, he's teaching. Uh, I'm sure that like there will be a moment's pause um, when you enter. Oh. Tabernacle will look and be like, uh, "Hello, um, Kaylin." Oh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I can wait patiently. Well, if you need to continue. Uh, he nods, finishes the lecture, and then turns and says, What is it that you needed, Caitlin? Well, I'm hoping to do some extra studies in my free time. Um, I've been reading a lot about the planes and the different peoples that you could find on each of the planes. A wise thing to do for any traveler. And the people that I've come to realize who have an innate ability to travel the plains freely are the Githyanki. Hmm. Do not also forget the Githzerai. They are sister race. Hi. Um, well, it's only a matter of time, or I'm hoping it's only a matter of time until I meet some of them. And I'd like to speak their language when it happens. Hmm. I see. Curious. Very well. Is... Uh, there are some solutions. I am familiar with the language of the Gith. I oh, recommend perfect. when you have a moment and perhaps some spare coin to facilitate the study of such a language, stop by the Griffin's bag and gather a primer of the Gith. <laughs> I think he sells them for 20 gold or something like that. I, that I'll will, go do that. That will aid in timing. And then I actually, I actually have a, an infernal primer, um, that is collecting dust. Eventually, I'll get to it, but um, I'll go pick one up. Mm -hmm. Bring it back here, and we will uh, prepare you to learn Gith. Though I warn you, it is a difficult language, very different from common. Um, angry. And he'll stay in giant. Um, it couldn't be as more, more difficult than this. You might be surprised, he says in giant back to you. Oh, yes. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, then he'll... Um, scuttle off to the Griffin's bag. Um, yeah, a primer for Gith, which is an uncommon language, is cheaper than the more common <laughs> ones. Um, please roll me a d100. Okay. Okay. 14. Well, it, it's not that much cheaper. Um, it's 24 gold is the cost of a Gith primer. Okay. Uh, you rolled the discount and you rolled really bad, so. <laughs> oh, well, that's fine. 24 gold. Uh, when you ask for that, Glass looks at you and he says, Are you sure this is what you meant to purchase? I? Hmm. Very well. And he slides the thin book across the desk to you. 
It's very simple, unmarked. It just says GIF, language primer in common across the cover. Tabernacle told me this was going to be a hard language to learn. Oh, yes. Why is it so small then? Without saying a word, Glass <laughs> opens the book and you see the first page. And it's uh -huh. just like, it's basically a table of contents. There are not that many words in the Gith language. <laughs> you see oh. that it is talking almost entirely about tone. Everything in GIF is relayed in the harmonics and tone of your voice. I I eat my words. Um, thank you. You are welcome. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> thank you. And uh, he'll start with Tabernacle. Okay. Uh, that day, you return and Tabernacle uh, guides you through the first steps of learning Gith. Um, so, to learn another language is basically just to practice it. Um, mm -hmm. I require... So, you can kind of choose how you want to study this. Um, you can choose either wisdom or intelligence, but if you choose wisdom, you do not get to add proficiency. Oh. Um... So I, I think they basically... I think intelligence is actually the better choice. Um, I have a plus two to intelligence. Plus proficiency, yeah, plus, which is plus two. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it would... It's not much difference, but yeah, intelligence would be better. Okay. Uh, I need... So as you start this and over the next... Uh, using the primer reduces the amount of time it takes, but it still takes a month to become com like conversationally fluent. Not okay. comfortable, but enough that you can stutter through a conversation. Um, it takes a month if you succeed on your roll. So please, roll me intelligence plus proficiency uh, three times. Okay. I'm just going to roll nature since it has the proficiency it Works for right. intelligence. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay, really well done. That is a success. Roll another. Another good one. Again, a great success. One more. Okay. All right. Well, I guess it takes he's a month. Really good. It, well, the you. It just means you understand. This language yeah. is hard, um, and you are becoming aware just how hard it is because it feels like there's a level to this language that you are just not capable of conveying. And when you when you mention that, Taber Tabernacle replies, Gith are psionic, and you are not. So you are missing an entire level of conversation and communication they can manage. All right. So, but All right. with those rolls, by the end of the month, you can say you can speak and read Gith. Okay. He so is definitely... It's, a, it's a little clumsy. Yeah, he's definitely an ishtic. <laughs> think too much Baldur's Gate. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, knowing... Kind of leading into the psionic part of it, knowing that... That would trigger another conversation that just kind of popped up in my head. Um, but knowing that, what Tabernacle just told him, mm -hmm. he would try to take some time with Sean and try to ask him about his ability. How? Um, like, how do you bring it up? Like, just give me a... Like, how does this conversation... Say they're at the Merry Guard or whatever. How do you suddenly bring this up? I think he would... Um, like, one... After, like, everything... One night, maybe a Friday night, he'll go to Sean's room, see if he's there. Um, and just kind of, like, ask to hang out. 
Uh, okay. Um, I and mean, at this point, it's been a few months. You and Sean are friends, so he'd be like, "Hey, sure. What's the worst that could happen?" Well, I shouldn't have asked that. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you. Um, well, there's a little bit of backstory to this. Um, I've been taking lessons with Tabernacle and learning Gith. Hold on. <laughs> I need to roll uh, an Arcana for Sean. What's that then? Um, have you heard of the Gith Yankee and Gith Sarai people? No, is this a cult? They're the people of the Astral Plane. Okay. Uh, for the record, Sean rolled a natural one on his Arcana. So he's never heard of them. Um, I think he would just give him the general overview of Gif you, Yankee. You do not have to explain Gif to me. You explain mm -hmm. Gif to Sean. And he says, all right, so why do you want to learn... Why do you want to learn Gith? I guess that's not really important. What well, that has to do with me? <laughs> Tabernacle told me that they have psionic abilities. Ah, all right. And I kind of wanted to ask you about your ability to I speak did, in my head. I did wonder when this was going to come up. It's been a well, while, I imagine. You did hold it back for quite a few months. I was very curious about it before, but I didn't want to pressure you into telling me everything. I appreciate that. Uh, you know I'm from Eastern Aurelia, right? Aye. Uh, at least originally, um, moved to, it doesn't matter. So, where I'm from, where I grew up as a lad before I was so kindly taken in by my, uh, foster parents, I, um, I wasn't the only sort of fellow who could speak into other people's minds, and I used to have dreams um have you heard of a kalashtar as a player i fucking knew it <laughs> okay uh uh um no i've never i've never heard that word or have well, i you probably can, not are you proficient in arcana you're half proficient in arcana half uh, i'll just say he doesn't Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Um, well, uh, as my foster parents taught me, um, you see he kind of hesitates for a minute as he seems to be trying to find the words. So, you're a human. Right? I'm free force human. Okay. At a glance, you look like a human. At a glance, I look like a human, too, right? Um, Aye. But if you look a little close, and he, like, covers his beard, and you see that it it was almost like it was shaved a little misshapenly. Because when he covers it, his face suddenly looks a little too symmetrical. It looks a little uncanny. He says, Kalashtar, like myself, are... Um, well, we were born in two places at once, um, here, and also in the plane of dreams, um, and when that happens, right. when that, when that happens, a magical being, uh, is also born at the same time, and they bind themselves with a Kalashtar, uh, they don't really say much but you experience their thoughts and they experience yours um, and they can speak to other people 
for you and tell you what they're saying back. Does that make sense? Aye, right, it makes sense. Right. That's... I'm glad, because uh, I didn't really have a better way of explaining it. Um, that's... Well, you you explained it perfectly. Fantastic. <laughs> you see, he looks a little relieved. And he says, so, the, the, the dream alien that is connected to my soul uh, shares its dreams with me, and in turn, I can share the dreams of other people, but only just their thoughts. I can speak into your mind, you can speak into mine. That's it, really. There's some other things that happen. It's weird. Honestly, you're taking this much better than a lot of other people I've told about. Oh. I've, lost, I've lost a couple dates because they were weirded out by the fact that I could think into their head. My grandmother always taught me to hold judgment until I knew a person. Um, and to keep an open mind with everybody I meet. So why you don't lady? really... I... You don't really ch know a person until you've walked a mile in their shoes. That is, that's how the saying goes. So, to be honest with you, I think that's amazing. <laughs> I think uh, I—that's all I can say. Um, really. Um. Why why are you so I guess you just told me but you shouldn't be afraid of who you are it's not just okay it's not just that it's just that there are from what I've heard there are legends of people who hunt Kalashtar um, I've not met one but they see the the creatures that I share the dreams with as abominations. And as a connection to that creature, I'm a target worthy of killing. Well. If ever we run into a person like that, know that I'll be there to watch your back. There's a long moment, and I need you to roll me a persuasion check. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Sean just nods, and he says, You have a good heart, Caitlin, and I, I appreciate you. And lest don't... Don't you worry. If that sort of thing happens, you're going to be the first to know, because... Fuck me if I'm getting sh getting knifed in the back. I'll probably catch it before it happens. It, I've um, got good eyes. I'm holding you to that. Well, I hope you would. Right. Uh, did you... About the psionics thing, did you bring that up for a reason, or were you just curious? I was just curious um this language is hard um and he just kind of like opens the primer that he brought with him mm -hmm. uh and shows him the primer <laughs> hang on sean looks at it yeah sean looks at it and he says fuck that <laughs> oh if we plan to stick as a team together, we might run into these people. So I'm getting a sore throat just from reading this. 
Well, you won't have to worry about talking to him because I'll be the one talking to him. But um, I was just the psionics. I was. Oh, I. I was. Right. It piqued my curiosity. Well, since you know now, um, he kind of taps uh, his cheek, like just underneath the bone under his eye, like right above the jawbone. He says, if I tap this, that means you can think at me, all right? If there's a tight spot. I'll remember that. Mm-hmm. You're one of the few that knows that, so uh, I've trusted you with it before, and nothing bad happened, and I'm not dead, so I feel like I can trust you with this too. You could definitely trust me. But with that, let's go get a drink. Thank fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, you've, you've learned a little bit about Sean. All right. Great. Uh, you're now about halfway through your timeline here. You've learned the Gith language. You've got... Um, hmm? Yeah. Uh, if I have the time simultaneously with that, he would like to meet Tame. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I forgot about that. Uh, you totally can do that. Um, okay. So, as you go to the Barbarian classroom, like immediately after talking to Tabernak, probably before going and getting the primer, um, you stop okay. by Makito's classroom. Um, you see Hiram. Uh, he is sweating, seated on one of the of these various benches. You see Makito, who is a very unassuming-looking human. Um, he has a quarterstaff that he's leaning on. And he looks up at you as you enter, and he says, Hello. Uh, Good day. You see next to him, also sweating, uh, and is wielding a great axe, is a tower of half-orc woman. Tame is almost seven feet tall. Uh, she Shit. is all muscle. Um, she's wearing what looks like the remnants of hide armor that I've kind of been stitched together with the Marigard Paisley. Um... A lot of her is uncovered. You can see, like, her stomach. You can see her upper thighs. She looks like she definitely uh, is the opposite of Hiram, who is wearing almost full plate armor. And Tame uh -huh. looks at you, and she says, Who's the fresh meat? I, uh... I'm Kaylin. I'm one of the ranger students. She appraises you. Roll me a general charisma roll. As she looks you up and down. Okay, 20. Okay. <gasps> she kind of thumps the great axe on the ground and then slides it into like a big leather sheath on her back where the blade of the axe just sticks up over her shoulders. Um... Makito says, What do you need, son? Well, I was. Persh sent me over because I'm looking to add another student to my team. And he mentioned Tame. I was wondering if uh, I had some time or I could get some time with Tame just to introduce myself and talk a little bit about. A team. Under his breath, you hear Hiram say, good luck. Um, you hear Makito uh, looks between the two of them and nods and says, we're about finished for the day. Go ahead and take the afternoon. And he uh, put tosses the quarterstaff over. Do You see there is an enormous pile of staves. Um, and as you with your high passive perception, you notice a Hiram on his face and Tame all over the place. They are covered in welts. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, Tame, who is uh, just basically like rolling her shoulders, <laughs> relieved to no longer be getting uh, the bad end of a fight, it looks like, 
you see that she is breathing heavy. She kind of re-centers herself. All right. <sighs> Kaylin, huh? From the... I... From the look of it, before we have a conversation, let's go get a drink. You look like uh, you could use one. You're talking my language. Good deal. So? We'll go wherever you like. The ship stool's my favorite. Fair enough. Let's go. So, uh, the two of you head down to the ship stool tavern on the far side of town. Uh, uh-huh. When you get in there, uh, Tame just holds a finger up to the bartender, another half-orc, and the bartender just nods and says, Usual? Fair enough. And then he looks at you and says, What about you? What can I get you? I'll take the same. Hmm. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, you, so Tame has brought a very, it's like a tankard. Uh-huh. Which, it does have ice floating around in it, uh, and you kind of glance over at it before one is set before you. It is a tankard of whiskey. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I had a, a a fun challenge in mind to try and, like, win her over. Um, we'll see how this goes. Um, so... As she sits down, um, she gestures for you to sit at the table next to her. <laughs> she sets the whiskey down, pulls a cigar out of her pack, and lights it. She says, smoke. He's, Kaylin is thinking, what is it with me and getting smokers on my team? Like, you just happen to choose them. What do you want from me? Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, he watches her light up and, uh, all right. Well, um, Purse sent me to you because I'm in need of a, well, someone who can hit some, someone pretty hard. Yeah, I can do that. Get in their, get in their face. Um, I saw you in the festival. Hi. What happened to that uh, uh, mean pale bitch? She was your friend, well, wasn't she? Hi. She was part of it, but um, we've gone our separate ways. All right. Um, so you're looking to go green. If uh, if that's what you want to call it, hi. She is chuckling into her whiskey as she knocks him back. Um, she says, "All right, who do you got on your team already?" Well, let me know if you know any of them. But um, I catch a lot. You might be surprised. Duracon, cleric uh, student. Fucking yeah, I know him. He's loud. Hi. Um, but through all the loudness, he's a pretty... He's a good good guy. Sure, if he can see uh, past his own dick. All right, who else? <laughs> Matthew. Rogue oh, student. The, the little sneak thief. <laughs> Hi. All right. Yeah, he's fine. Who else? He's, pr- he's pretty decent with the poison. Um, I'm sure he is. And uh, our... Brains, Sean. Uh, hold on, I gotta roll. See if Tame has noticed him. Ah, all right. Tame's like scratching at her chin. Uh, the tattoos that she wears. You speak giant. I do. Yeah. Uh, you know what they say. Okay. Uh, on the left, so it's, the giant runes are kind of split. Um, have you, hold on, let me pull up Tame's image. I don't know if you've even. Did I lose Tame in my foundry? I've literally lost Tame. No! 
It's not a big deal. I can just re-import her, but what the heck happened? Okay. Uh, well, my apologies. This will just take a quick second. Uh, it's never easy. Uh, please hold while I recover a lost character sheet. Good. Oh, that's what happened. Okay. Uh, good lord. I swear I do this for a living. Okay, I'm going to send this in the Discord just so you can see what she looks like. Um, because I have to convert the image, which is why it fell out. Um, oh, alright. The tattoos, they're split across her face, and the runes that go down her left cheek in giant say, bleed, and on the right say, for me. Oh. Okay. Uh, so Damn. You didn't, All right. You probably didn't catch them uh, with her hair draped across them, but as she's leaning back and smoking, you read those tattoos on her face. All right. He makes note of those. Um, so, the plan is, after graduation, to keep the team together and... Um, Y'all worked well together in the fall festival. It makes sense to me. Aye, we did. Except for... Right. The one. Aye. Um... Well, the plan is, after graduation... Um... That wasn't there before, was it? And she's pointing at the snake on your neck. Oh, no. Um... I like it. I'm glad you do. It's, um, it has a lot of meaning. Um, something I'll get into later on. But, um, the plan after graduation is to take this team and be, well, envoys and take special missions to other planes of existence. Like what? The Hells? Could be the Hells. Could be the Beastlands. Um, you see, when you or, say the Beastlands, her... She kind of has like a dour look on her face, but suddenly uh, her fangs are pushing her lips up and it gets like a, a smirk, but it's unnaturally intimidating and she says you're speaking my language well my speciality is um, have you ever heard of a horizon walker hold on you hear lots of shit on the road so you have heard she nods as she takes a hit of her cigar. Well, I'm hoping to lead a team that could specialize in extra planar missions. Does that sound... Does that sound fun to you? It sounds... real exciting. Uh, insight check. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Roll insight. Natural 20. <laughs> uh, she doesn't quite believe you. She thinks that does sound exciting. That would be cool. But this guy? Like, she doesn't <laughs> believe you are that that you're saying that you want to do. All right. Give me just a moment. And I'll be here. 
he'll close his eyes and try to locate the nearest portal. Okay. Um, whatever that might be. Let's see, you're on the ship's stool. Yep. And hope I hope it's not the water plane. <laughs> uh, there is a portal. It is on Tame's belt. You sense a small, very small portal to the Astral Sea. Uh, in this, he kind of like he he's got his like fingers kind of lightly on the table, and he's kind of focusing, closed eyes, and then his brows furrow, and he opens them, and he looks at Tame. What? Your belt. She glances down. What? What about it? It has a mini portal to the astral plane. She, you look at where you sense the portal. You see there is a leather pouch hanging from her belt. Ah. Her eyes are narrow as she's looking at you and then back down to the belt. She says, That's my bag of holding. Hi. I've seen one before. But that's the closest portal that I could sense. That you could sense? Hi. Now she's rolling an inside check. Okay. <laughs> Uh, should I roll persuasion? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're telling the truth. Shit. Eight. Eight. Well, she rolled like a 19. Uh, so she looks at you, <laughs> takes another hit of the cigar. All right. All right. All right. Maybe we can work together. All right. But Duracon gets on my ass about Vion or whatever. I'm telling him to fuck himself. I'll let him know to tone it down. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think he will, but I can definitely ask him to. In any case, he's good at healing and he's good at th hitting things hard. So. I get it. We're working together. We don't have to be best friends. I. I will well, say your pitch is the best I've heard so far. Good to hear it. Well then. Now, let me let me try to drink you under the table. <laughs> You're serious. Hi. All right, bottoms up, little man. <laughs> Roll me a con save. <laughs> oh shit! Okay. Well. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! Okay, twelve. <laughs> it is harsh whiskey. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, she rolled too good, and she's a fucking barbarian. I um, know. You, you give it a good shot. You give it a good go. You get halfway through, but then just the fucking smoky burn of this cheap whiskey slams into your throat, and you have to cough. You cannot. You just can't <sighs> keep going. And Tame, as she's chugging it, like, watches as you cough, and she just... <laughs> um, I think once he's done coughing, I'll just kind of, like, smirk and wipe his mouth and just nod. If you're buying, you can get better shit next time. <laughs> she takes, she drains the last of hers. <laughs> uh, with a 12, you do not immediately become so drunk you can't walk. But you are drunk. 
Okay. It's very strong and very cheap. It's it's like drinking gasoline. I just wanted to show her, show her that I have the guts to okay. challenge her in something like that. Uh, you've convinced her of something. I'll say that. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to gain her respect. Okay. In a certain fashion. Sure. Um, I will say that for the moment, you have convinced Tame to join your team. Perfect. All right. So you have a little bit more of your timeline left after studying right. a gif, uh, getting a tattoo, talking to these people. What else is there that you want to accomplish before your graduation? Um, just work hard on building a purse. Okay. Um, making money. Making money. All right. Uh, okay. You're going to do that by hunting, yes? Hunting for pelts um, and uh, maybe exotic creatures in the area, if there are any. Um, if at all possible... He wants to make do on his promise to um, Glass and try to petition for him to go back to Ar uh, Arcadia and okay. get some more Pyrus. Roll me a D100. Seventy-four. Okay. Uh, you get you convince Glass and you get Glass to fund Tabernacle to send you to the plane of magic one more time over this period of you know awesome of the timeline um, and which will be a pretty good boon to your uh, earnings over this uh okay and if if possible he'd like to take two people with him okay uh first Sean okay second because he promised Lorna <laughs> okay uh, if that's possible you can have that conversation with uh, Lorna's player about maybe doing a written scene for that uh, okay in the meantime roll me a d100 for how successful you are um no not a d100 sorry well oh, oh, oh. I call I said it that's fine <laughs> with a 99. I'll take it because I said it and then took it back. With a 99, you, Lorna, and Sean gather so much pyrice uh, that it begins making weird magical effects occur on oh, shit. your clothes <laughs> and the ground around you as you're leaving. Um, but oh, Glass man. is extremely pleased. <clears throat> um, and you, you end up making at the end of this just from the trip to uh, the Plane of Magic, which you are not inclined to, but expected to split with Lorna and Sean, you make yeah. twelve. You make twelve hundred gold. Just me, in or total. split to in be, total to be split. You you are handed twelve hundred gold that you should probably split three ways. Yeah. All right. So four hundred. Okay. Uh, you can. You can fill Lorna in on that uh, in your written session when that happens. If that happens. Or if you just talk to her. Whatever. Um, so. Okay. Last hunting. Um, mm -hmm. do, you incorp do you include anybody's assistance? Hiram. Hiram. Okay. We've, we had a really good hunt and... Romy, uh, three survival checks at advantage. Okay. Oh, 12. Okay, a poor one for the first one. Okay, much better. Great 25. One the second one, okay. And another good one, 26. Okay, so, uh, aside from all of the money that you earned in going to the plane of magic, that specific task hunting with Hiram for the last basically five months up until your graduation, you are yeah. a total of about 
just you, you earn a total of about 500 gold. Oh, okay. Uh, keep in mind that you're going to be spending some gold on food, drinks, lodging, yeah. if you choose to take it, travel, these sorts of things. So, like, from your total at the end of the year, uh, let me roll... I mean, how... How spendy is Kalen? Is he buying lots of drinks for everybody, or is he trying to save his money? He's gonna... Well, as soon as he has enough money with a little bit of overhead, he's gonna buy that bow. Okay. Uh, which was, I believe, 1100 But... He did ask Glass if he was able to get some pyrites for him, that he would discount the bow. Yes. Um, um, so I'm wondering how much of a discount would he get? He would probably take about 150 gold off the cost of the bow. Okay, so 950. Uh, right now, after all the hunting and the pyrites, um, well, he had enough after the pyrise. Okay. Um, um, then you would purchase the sun moat. Yeah, he had 795 gold plus 222 platinum, which is... Yeah, that's just, that's just enough. Okay, then we'll say at about eight months into your year, you purchase the sun moat. All right, minus 950. Which is not an official item on D&D Beyond yet, but what it basically does, it's a plus one bow with three charges. It regains the charges on a long rest. You can expend a charge to add a D4 of radiant damage to it to a shot. Okay. Uh, for now, I'll just add a plus one bow. Long bow, right? Yes, it's a long bow. Okay. Got it. It can also regain a charge if it is spends a short rest in sunlight. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Uh, you'll have the item on Dean to be on soon enough that you can actually have the official thing. Uh, okay. Anyway... So, with that hunting and the money earned, uh, feats gained, languages learned, and perhaps relationships improved and a new party member, we come to the end of your year, where your graduation is tomorrow, and that is where we will end the session for tonight. All right. So, uh... Did you have a number for maybe how much I spent? Oh, in that yeah, year? sorry. Uh, 115 gold. 115 gold. Okay. So. That's just over the year on food, lodgings, drinks, uh, horses. Got it. Okay. He's still looking really good with money. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. You rolled really well in your hunts, and also you rolled a 99 on Pyrus, so. These things Love happen. Uh, Lorna will also be pleased to learn that she's just earned like 400 gold for being dragged along. <laughs> uh, I will message uh, the player uh, as soon as I can. Fantastic. All right, so this session was a little weird. Next session, we handle your graduation. I hope that this timeline was satisfying. I hope you're happy with how everything went. And I look I am... forward to seeing what's next in Kaylin's story. Awesome. I am more than happy with this. This is great. Awesome. Uh, loved it. Awesome. All hey, right. Thank you again. Have a good night, everybody.